Hi, this is Brian Village from Honda Cat, and today we're going to talk about keeping bait. Now we can all keep bait, you put it in a plastic sack, you put it in the freezer. I'm talking about keeping bait alive. Now big catfish did not become big catfish by being on a diet. They became big catfish by eating other fish. So whether you're fishing from the bank or you're fishing from a boat, what you need is live bait. And to keep live bait for an extended period of time, can be very difficult. And a lot of people have a lot of difficulty with that. Now, in different parts of the uh, Union, the United States, there are different laws that pertain to what fish you can use as bait and where you can catch it and what body of water you can use it. And we're not going to address any of that because I don't know what state you live in, so it wouldn't be right for me to talk about it because I don't know what applies to you. For you to know that, you're going to need to talk to your local game warden, look up online your local state, uh, what laws apply to you where you're at. But today we're going to talk about how to keep bait alive. Um, we'll have other talks about how to go get bait, but today we're going to concentrate about the ideas and what it takes to keep bait, keep them alive, and keep it over an extended period of time. So we're going to talk about, and you can see here that we have a large tank and it's an old milk tank. We have an aerator going. We have some bait in there. It's all the other side, but we have the aerator going and we're going to continue this talk. In the tank that I have, I'm in my own, my garage here that I have my house. This is my, the bait tank that I've used. Now, over the years, I've had many different bait tanks. I've had 55 gallon barrels. I've had a series of five gallon tanks. I've had old wash tubs. This is an old uh, milk container that at one time had a refrigerator unit on it and I used it. And it's another thing you had to plug in, another thing you had to pay electricity for. I quit that and now I, I'll show you what we do here in a minute and how I, and how I make it uh, so I can keep fish. One of the things, and I'm going to talk about many different things as I go through this presentation, because it isn't one thing that keeps a fish alive. It's several things that you do in conjunction with one another that make it all work. What you have here is a big aquarium. And so you want to do this the same things you would if you had an aquarium in the house. You know, you, you buy a, a fish aquarium for the kids and you try to keep the fish alive, but you're buying goldfish and you can buy them down at Walmart pretty cheap. I'm keeping big chubs, crook chub, big bluegill, uh, shiners, gizzard shad, stuff that can be very difficult to keep alive. And if you had to buy some of these crook chubs, you'll pay a dollar a piece for them down at the bait factory or the bait store. So this, this stuff, and sometimes in the midsummer, I'll have a couple hundred individual bait uh, fish in my bait tank. I have hundreds and hundreds of dollars of value of bait in my tank. I don't want to lose that. So I do very hard and I work very diligently to keep my bait alive. And that's what I want to convey to you guys today. So one of the things you want to do in whatever bait tank you use, uh, if, if it can be insulated some way, so whatever coolness you can get in there you can keep. Now if you have something like this and it has a refrigerator unit that's great. Um, it costs money and I'm kind of an old cheapskate so I took it off. When I did run it I run it on a timer so it only run certain times of the day even though it's in the garage in here and it's out of the sun obviously there's no sunshine it can still get fairly hot in here so I work very hard to keep cool the water cool so I, you know, the insulated idea of a milk cooler is very appealing. If you do use something that isn't uh, insulated, like a bathtub, an old, an old tank of some kind, then you got to start thinking about how you're going to keep that cool in there. One of the first things we'll talk about is cool. So in the summertime, you know, we have weather. It's, it gets 90 degrees, 100 degrees. Inside of a, a building, like even a garage, you can get very stagnant air, you know, it can be very stifling. That kind of air is not very conducive to oxygen. They need oxygen. Cooler water, fish need less air. They do less movement. So the colder you can keep it, the less movement, and it's a lot easier to keep the fish alive. So one of the first things I would say is keep uh, the water as cold as you possibly can get it. I mean, pretty darn cold, really. So one of the things that I do is I and like I said, I'm trying to do ways that didn't cost a lot of money. I use frozen 
uh, tubs of ice. I have a refrigerator in here, and on a daily basis, I fill uh, ice cream jugs with water, put them, put them in the freezer right there, and I rotate them. I put a couple in, if it's really hot, I might put two or three in, maybe even four, they'll thaw out. That keeps the water cold. I put the old ones from yet that day back in the freezer, and I just rotate them on a daily basis. And if it's not that hot, one a day, or maybe one every two or three days. So that is the idea that I use to keep my water cold. I just use an artificial uh, cold ice cube, and that's the whole of my theory of how to keep the water cold. So uh, there's a lot of ways to do it, refrigerator unit, um, there's all kinds of things you can or can't do. This works for me. Ice Another cream. thing we'll talk about is bacteria. Now, uh, all fish have a coating of slime on them. That coating of slime is it's secreted through their body. It grows and stays on their body on the outside, and it protects them from all the things in the environment, other bacteria, and all the things that they encounter when they're in the water. That slime is their force field to keep them healthy. So you want a clean environment. Um, when uh, I let my tank down, which I draw the water down, we're in the process right now of, of filling the water. I actually use city water that has things like fluorine and all the other stuff. Uh, it'd be nice to have nice clear spring water, which I don't. There again, you gotta pay for city water. I don't have a way to do it without using the hose. So. We're probably putting a few impurities in there uh, that the fish aren't going to normally see in their natural state. We can work around that. So we're going to continue to fill this up. This is a 400 gallon tank. We're going to fill it up to about right in this area here. I always kind of figured I'm filling it to about a 300 gallon capacity. So I have a 300 gallon tank that we're using to store our bait in. When I draw it down, I take something like Mr. Bubbles or anything and I wipe it really good to clean off any impurities that might be on it. Now this is stainless steel so it cleans up very well and keep itself very clean. So the milk container works very well for something like that because it's easy to clean, stainless steel doesn't rust. So I really like the, the idea that I'm using an old milk container to do this. So keep your tank clean as you can and keep it cold. That's the first two things we've learned already. We're gonna keep our tank as clean as we can and we're going to uh, keep it as cold. Now if you keep a lot of bait, they're going to naturally use it. Uh, I don't feed them, but they secrete their own ex excrement. So, you know, they're putting stuff in the water as well. Uh, there's a point when you do have to change the water. If you're gonna keep a lot of bait in there, every once in a while you're gonna to have to draw it down and put clean water back in. And that's what we just did. We have a fair amount of bait in here right now. We draw it down to a very low, very low level. We cleaned it, now we're putting water back in. One of the things you can do, this is the next thing we're gonna talk about, is you can promote the growth of fungus in your tank. The way you can do that, you gotta have a place for the fungus to grow. And what we use is a tank full of aquarium rock that's in a, uh, like a mesh sack that sack then lays in the bottom, and this has surface area, and fungus will grow on that, and that fungus is something that has to be in there to continually to fight the bacteria that's in there. So you now have a place for the good stuff to grow, you have surface area, and even if you put two or three things in there for the fungus to grow on, you've given a better environment for your bait tank. So. This is one of the most, one of the other tidbits that you'll, I hope that you'll pick up on is in your bait tank, give some place for the good fungus to grow to protect the fish from other bad bacteria. One of the other things you always got to remember, especially if you're keeping a lot of bait and trying to keep it for a long period of time, is the amount of excrement that the fish will put into the water. That ammonia that now has been added to the environment. Uh, the more bait, the more ammonia, the more ammonia, the more detriment it is to the other fish, and it's one of the things that will kill them. So we've got to get rid of ammonia. Uh, there's a couple things you've got to do. One is uh, Sure Life makes a very good product, no ammonia. 
Uh, I use this product. I, I'm not trying to say there's not other products out there, but SureLife uh, has been a company out there that has serviced me very well. Um, I'm kind of a believer in it. So I guess I am kind of promoting them. It's not something I sell, but it is a good product out there. I'm sure there's other products that would work. And whether you use SureLife, no ammonia or not, use something that counteracts, counters the ammonia that the fish are putting in by just staying alive. So if you're doing something to counter the ammonia. One of the mistakes that I made um, as I got into keeping a lot of bait for an extended period of time was I had containers that I would close. And so everything was shut down and I would, I would lose fish, a lot of fish. And one of the things I learned was the, the bubblers that I had were bubbling it would bubble, the ammonia was in those air bubbles, they would burst as they come above the surface of the water, but my bait tanks were closed, the ammonia stayed in there. Well, I didn't get rid of it, I was, even though I was trying to use like things like this to get rid of the ammonia, it was still staying in my tank. You can say here that in the lids of my uh, milk container were the openings where the, the milk went in and they took milk out. Well, what I've done is I have put little mesh screens in there that allow the ammonia to come up, bubble with the air bubbles, burst, and then float away. So I am now giving places for the ammonia to dissipate and leave my bait tank, and that has been a big, a big help to keeping bait alive is learning that the ammonia had to leave. So that has been one of the things, please learn that one, because that was a pretty expensive thing for me. I had many years where I fought with bait dying until I learned the ammonia has to leave. So always make sure your bait tank has openings for air to leave and the ammonia to be rid of itself. One of the other things that you can do to make more bubbles is put hydrogen peroxide in. Hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide on hot day will bubble. Don't put a lot in. It's just a, a little bit will help to bubble. It'll uh, produce more dissolved oxygen. It's just one of them little tricks. I don't do that very often because I have always have good bubbler systems in my tank, but um, hydrogen peroxide will do very good to make more bubbles, which produces more dissolved oxygen on the dissolved oxygen is we breathe in and out, in and out. We have a set of lungs and we can breathe this way. Fish breathe through their gills and their gills is how they get their oxygen. They can't breathe the air from the atmosphere, but they get it from the water. That dissolved oxygen that's in there is how they stay alive. So one of the things that is a big key is bubblers. You've got to have some good bubblers. You have to have a system that produces a lot of bubbles. I actually have two sets of bubblers in here. One is a pretty large bubbling system and it is uh, encased in foam. That foam is like a filter. And then I have a small aquarium filter, but on it I have a couple stones that produce a lot more bubbles even though it's only a small bubbler. So the bubbling system I have is pretty extensive with you know the dual system, the one being a pretty commercial size, and the one is just an aquarium size. But even with the aquarium size, you can add little stones. Those stones are designed to make the air come through the fissures in that stone and produces more bubbles. More bubbles, more dissolved oxygen. That's how the fish stay alive. So another one of them tidbits to learn, dissolve oxygen, the more the better. The bigger the fish, the more oxygen they need. There are also something to remember, some fish stay alive a lot easier than others. Crick chubs, gizzard shad can be some of the hardest ones to keep alive. Bluegill, they can live about anything. Bullheads, flatheads love those bullheads. Bullheads can stay alive and just dang near anything. You can forget about this, go on vacation, come back, all the other fish will be floating on tap, them bullheaded will be just floating around there eating the dead carcasses, all the dead fish. Just loving it. So, uh, depending on what you want to keep is how extensive you want to do in your uh, bait tank. 
as we continue to talk about this, also remember this. As we keep live bait, and then we now go fishing, we get in our boat over here and go fishing, we now can take those same lessons that we've learned in keeping bait alive in here, and we can take them to our boat and our live wells. So not only we can keep our bait alive longer, but our fish alive longer using these same techniques. Colder water, more dissolved oxygen, all these things do a very good job of keeping bait in a bait tank, also bait in the live wells, in the caught fish, and bringing them home alive and not have them die you know, halfway through the fishing trip. Now, we are filling our tank back up. We drain it down, we cleaned it really nice and good, cleaned the stainless steel, got rid of everything. Uh, we filled it up to about a 300 gallon level. So we're gonna shut our water off. City can keep the rest of the water. We have a filter system that I have built uh, in here. Uh, it's a, a high-end aquarium setup, and it's still a carbon-activated filter. Now, the carbon-activated filter does a very good job of filtering, but even the carbon-activated filter that's in here, there's two of them actually, the carbon is in the middle, and the filter is a filter. But the carbon activated filter will not take the nitrates or the ammonia out of the water. So even though you now have a good filtering system and you have activate, activated carbon filter, which is a high quality filter to keep everything clean, you still are not getting rid of the nitrates or the ammonia, which we've already talked about using the better bait, the sure life, uh, no ammonia, and other ideas to get rid of the nitrates and the ammonia the fish are putting back in the water. So. We have a very high, high end filtration system that we're using. We have 300 gallons of water that we're now filtering. We have a high end pump producing lots of dissolved oxygen. We're doing a very good job of keeping everything cool, clean, and a good environment for our fish. One of the other things that we have to talk about is salt. Salt is part of life. Uh, without salt, we die. Without salt, the fish die. Very little things on earth uh, work without salt. If too much salt is bad for you. My mom is constantly after me, put salt in my food, plug my veins up, but we do have to have salt in our aquarium here to keep the fish alive. So in our bait tank, uh, we have to have some salt. City water uh, it has very little salt in it. They've cleaned it. Uh, so when I put the city water in here, there's very little salt in here. We have no other environment. We're in a stainless steel tank, it's pretty, cleans, so there actually is no salt. If you keep the fish there very long, one of the things they will do is they will die of salt deficiency. There's no natural environment for them, so they need salt. I use a product called Pond Salt. Uh, you can get any kind of salt. Uh, any kind of salt will work, but you know, crystals like this are just a little bit cheaper. You can buy it in any aquarium store. You can buy it online. There's a lot of different ways to put it in there, but they say about a cup to a cup and a quarter per hundred gallon. I, I told you before, this is a 400 gallon tank. We fill it to about 300 gallons. But we put about three cups of salt in this uh, when we fill it. The salt will eventually dissipate. Sometimes I do add a little bit more later. It depends how good your filters are working and everything like that. But um, every time I drain it, I redo the salt. But I try to keep around a, a cup and a quarter a cup or so per hundred gallon. Keeping salt in there is one of the things that will give you longevity of keeping the fish in your bait tank. So salt is one of the key ingredients not to forget. One of the other things I want to talk to you about is another product that Sure Life uh, puts out it's called Better Bait. Better Bait and it talks about on the, the cable here conditions water removes chlorine. Being that we're using city water, uh, it has chlorine. Chlorine is not all that healthy for the fish. That's one of the things that I try to counter. So chlorine is one of the things you're gonna fight. You, unless you have a spring out back, you can fill your tank with, if you use city water, you probably have to do something about chlorine. So what I do is I add, uh, the better bait has kind of a blue color to it, uh, has little crystals. Um, what I do when I put it in here, I try to, put enough that it turns the, the color a little bit and 
that seems to be about enough. The better bait is also one of the things that I do use when I put my bait in my live well to go fishing for a day. So during the course of the day, I'm not really worried about ammonia anymore. The fish haven't been fed. They're now going to be put on a hook in the very near future. They're not going to be, uh, life expectancy is pretty short for them now. So I'm not really worried about the ammonia, but the better bait will help them uh, last the day that I'm out fishing. So uh, the product Better Bait from Sure Life is another one of the products that I really like to extend the life of my fish in my bait tank. I talked about is uh, my frugal way to keep my water cold. I just use ice cream jugs. Uh, I, I'm the one that volunteers on a nightly basis to eat the ice cream, to come up with the used containers. So uh, uh, once we get the ice cream ate, we, use, we fill it up full of water, put it in the ice box right beside the bait well, and we just put it in here. When it's really cold, like 90 degrees, we put maybe a couple in a day. We take the old ones out on a daily basis, put it back in the ice box, and we just rotate them on a daily basis. And that's how I keep my water temperature at a very, very cold level for the fish. Cold is one of the things that helps keep the fish alive. We've got a nice talk now about how to keep bait, how to keep it alive, especially big bait. There's a couple of things I just want to go back over so we can kind of recap this. One, keep the water cool, cold. If you can keep that water cold, they're not going to move around as much. They're not going to use much oxygen. It's just going to be a lot easier to keep alive. Keep it cool. Dissolve oxygen. The more oxygen you got, the better the fish are going to be, the longer they will live. So cool, lots of dissolved oxygen a good bubbler system. We want good bacteria. We want the good bacteria to protect the fungus from eating away at the slime around the fish. What will happen is they'll do what they call the red notes. If they start to lose their slime and the outside world starts to work on them, the, the top of their nose will get really dry, they start to get cakey, then it'll turn red, and the fungus will eventually eat them and it will kill them. The way to prevent that is to keep the slime on the fish. We need the good bacteria in the aquarium, things like stones and mesh bags that give a place for the good bacteria to grow, helps protect the slime on the fish, and helps the fish last a lot longer. Dissolved oxygen, cold water, stones for the place for the good bacteria to grow. We need to counter the ammonia that's in the water. The longer you keep the fish in there, uh, the more ammonia they'll put into the water, the nitrate and the ammonia. We have to counter that. No ammonia is one of those products will do that. Have something, either the lid open or openings in your lid so the bubbles can burst with the ammonia and then dissipate and float away. Do not keep it in a sealed container of some kind or a closed lid where the ammonia is always staying with you. You have to remove that ammonia or it just stays with you. Ammonia will kill the fish. Everything has to have salt. About a cup, cup and a quarter of salt per hundred gallon. So if you're, you know, we got a hundred gallon tank, an old bathtub, take about a cup of salt to keep that equilibrium, the equilibrium, that's a big word, that the natural state of water the fish have when they're out in the creeks and the ponds, you have to recreate that same thing in your bait tank. So uh, put a little bit of salt in there for those fish. Better Bait is one of those kind of products I like to use that Sure Life makes. And what that does is counter the chlorine. This is the product I use not only in the bait tank here in the garage, but when I get to my a boat, I put it in my live well that I keep my bait in, in the boat. So the day that, it, the length that sometimes I'm fishing for eight hours a day, I want that bait to be healthy from the start of the day to the end of the day. Better bait will help that, keep the, the, the fish stable while they're in there and does a good job of keeping the bait during the course of the day as well as in the bait tank itself. You need a very good bubbler system, whether you buy a a high-end one or a high-quality aquarium. You need something to pump in air into that aquarium, your fish tank, at all times. 
lots of bubbles, lots of dissolved oxygen. Use stones to dissipate the bubbles. Your uh, filtration system should have some kind of a carbon filter in it. The, the carbon will do a very good job of cleaning it. It will not clean the nitrate or the ammonia, but it will clean everything else. Keep the filters clean. Every once in a while you just got to take them out and clean them. Every once in a while you just got to replace them. Every once in a while, even if you do all this stuff, your fish will need clean water. Draw the water down, clean the surfaces, put fresh water back in, redo everything again. Salt and no ammonia. So we have talked about a lot of stuff here. Hopefully I've given you some ideas how to improve your bait tank and how to keep your, your, your bait longer and during the course of the day when you're not fishing on the lake or in the river. So this is Brian Milch from Mondocat saying, here's the bait tank that we use. We're, we're very happy with it. We put a lot of bait here during the year. You can see the blue color from the better bait that we use. There's some of them nice big crick chubs we're talking about. That's, that's what them fish, them old big catfish are, are looking for, so that's how to keep them alive. This is Brian Mellish from Monocat saying, fish bigger, go home.